Hi guys and welcome along. Today we're going to be painting some miniature Christmas classics. Perfect little illustrations for Christmas cards, bullet journals or just for fun. So grab your paints and let's get going. Okay folks, settle in for a little bit of Christmas favourites. I'm going to be painting miniatures of some of my favourite things. So I just drew a line, marked out where I'm going to be putting things and now I'm just drawing in some shapes. So with these simple shapes I wonder, well I think you probably know what that one is. So we're going to have a Christmas pudding, a Christmas stocking, then we're going to have a lovely advent candle and then we're going to have a Father Christmas hat. Well, we're going to have some candy canes actually first, I think. Let's have a candy cane. And a Father Christmas hat on the end. Because it's sort of a slightly similar shape to the Christmas pudding. Okay. So those are my basic shapes and that's pretty much all I need to get started. We will put a little bit of trim around the top of our Christmas stocking. But essentially when you're drawing in pencil, keep it light, keep it faint and then it's much easier to rub out afterwards. So we're going to, as we normally do with these little miniature illustration sessions, we're just going to keep working our way along and building up the detail as we go. So settle in for a nice relaxing Christmassy painting session. So I'm going to start off with my Christmas pudding and the most sort of defining feature of particularly an illustration of a Christmas pudding is the wonderful cream pours from the top down. So I'm going to start by creating that shape. With the cream being white, we don't need really to be painting it. So it's just going to be the outline. So instead I'm just painting with burnt sienna. I'm just filling in the Christmas pudding. But I'm also already starting to think about the texture of the Christmas pudding because it's full of um, raisins and dates and nuts and cherries and all these kinds of things. Um, so I'm just leaving a few tiny unpainted spaces. Also just trying to blend that outline that I've painted with the cream to make sure it's not like a really obvious brown outline and then you've got the pudding underneath it. So I'm just sort of using the wetness that's already there uh, and then sort of dropping in a bit more brown when I fancy it and then I am just going to sort of round off the bottom. There we go. And then paint up from that point there little bit more and then I want some slightly shadowy sides that will just get in there whilst it's still wet so it can blend in. Lovely. On top we need some holly and some berries so in go the berries first, lovely little cadmium red. If you can paint them so they've got a little shine, so a tiny weeny circle there. And then my holly, this time I'm going to choose a bluey green and I'm going to first paint a thin line and then spike one, two, three and back like one, two, three, and in. Fill in one side, and then for the other, 
carefully colour it in, leaving a very fine line up the middle. So many people don't actually like Christmas pudding, do they? I I think I do. Like uh, because it's a once a year kind of thing, I'll I'll always have some. I only recently realised that I quite like Christmas cake, um, which I'm very pleased about because I made my first ever Christmas cake last year. Okay, this is looking cool, and the brown pudding will have dried by now so I'm going to add in a few little dots of orange that aren't going to show up hugely but they're going to be there and that's the important thing. I'll try not to get it in the cream like I did, there we go, you can always just reshape the cream bits. Have a little bit of red in there as well. And then I'm going to put some really dark little marks in there for some little raisins and currants. Lovely. Now, although the cream is white, we can still make it a little bit more exciting. It's funny, I said I was going to be like working my way along these illustrations, but I'm pretty much almost done on this one. So I've just found a little bit of sort of ochery, shadowy mix that was already just lurking in my palette. And what I'm doing is I'm just giving the cream a little bit of shine with it. Nothing too much. Just helping that outline. And that is looking pretty fantastic. So we'll leave that for the moment and then we might come back and see if we can do anything more on it. Here we go, we've got our Christmas stocking next. So I'm just gonna go in straight away with red. Now we've all got a slightly different idea of what a Christmas stocking looks like we've all probably got one well I don't know about you but I've had the same one for my whole life I love it very much it's got my name on it it's got an angel on it I remember I, I'm the youngest of three children and I remember my brother and sister being a little bit annoyed that mine was bigger than theirs haha <laughs> so anyway what we're going to do is I'm going to just do a very simple letter H on mine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the letter H in red here. And then we'll be able to really seamlessly colour in around it. Working fairly quickly to make sure the red outline we did on the stocking doesn't get too dry. bringing in any more colour make sure you add it sort of from the edge and then draw it in just not to disturb that nice kind of blend in from the outer edges that we've got. Now we can make that H look a bit more exciting but for now we've got to sort of look at the fur on top so a bit like the cream we're just going to use a 
gentle outlining with a sort of bit of a shadow. And that's rather nice. We're just getting we're getting a tiny bit of red in there, which is cool too. Just getting a little shape. So we will leave that one as it is. Now my advent candle, what I'm going to do is I'd like to have a little wreath around the base of the advent candle. So I'm going to just build up some holly. So if you start with that little central line, you won't go wrong with the holly. You can always go back and make your points a bit pointier. I think one of my favourite things of this time of year is when it gets dark and you can light some candles and just get all cosy. So the advent candle for me is quite a, a key image of Christmas. Okay, we've got holly and now we're going to add a little bit more wintry greenery and we're going to add a bit of fir and a bit of spruce so if you've been watching any of my other Christmassy um, watercolour tutorials you will have seen quite a few times these bits of foliage getting a mention what's quite cool is every time I seem to be painting them in slightly different contexts or different scales Of course, if you've painted your holly very wet, you'll need to wait for it to dry a little bit before you start layering in other bits of foliage. And I'm just mixing up the greens I'm using, maybe adding a bit of more blue to the green. Or a bit more brown. There is so much amazing colour outside this time of year, even though we all think that all the leaves have fallen off the trees and it's all a bit stark. Actually, it's a very exciting time. So a little pine cone. Maybe a little one down there as well. And then we need some holly berries too. Back into the cadmium red. I'm just going to add my berries wherever I fancy. I'm not going to worry too much about them being sort of placed accurately, if you see what I mean. And then to create a candle, we're going to create a sort of dripping wax at the top. And it's funny, I've just suddenly remembered that painting candles like this was one of my absolute favourite things to paint as a child. And I think it's that loopy dripping wax, a little bit like the cream on the Christmas pudding. I loved painting Christmas puddings and I loved painting candles. I think they were quite cartoonish for me and I quite liked that. So I'm just blending in a little bit of the actual candle itself. A 
little wick and then we will fill in the candle flame when we come back round to it but that's looking really nice okay a candy cane fairly simple but we can make it look a bit better than just simply adding the red and white stripes so what we're going to do is we're going to start off using this kind of shadowy warm shadowy color again so as we're using it so much I will specify that it is although it is a sort of mixture of the dregs in my palette it's from using blues and browns um, and in this case French ultramarine that more rich blue there and a bit of burnt sienna but then also a bit of yellow ochre and that just makes it that a little bit warmer and not into a sort of grey shadow. So you can see I've just sort of outlined it with a with a very dilute bit of this warm shadow and once that's dry we're going to go back and put in some red stripes. Speaking of red, this rather iconic hat here needs some of that stuff so let's go. So like the Christmas stocking, first I'm going to outline the red shape so the, the hat sort of tips over. So first off I've got my outline, I've cleaned my brush off and now I'm just going to draw the red in and although the red is very strong we still do get a little bit of light and shade from the middle that I'm going to carry on round. I'm trying not to touch this bit of red for as long as possible so it can remain untouched and dry and keep crisp as I advance on it. just enough time to keep it nice and untouched. You can just add in a bit of red there. And then once that's dry we can add in our white pom-pom and fur around the hat. So let's travel back to this side and see if we can add anything more. So I would like to get a tiny bit more detail on my holly. And all that means is a little bit more colour down the middle. And on some of those little spikes. Really nice. And I think we're done with that one. So next let's look at our H. We're going to use um, red in its more sort of concentrated form as well here so just do a nice outline and you wouldn't have been able to do that immediately you needed to let that one dry completely. And then to hang it at the fireplace or at the foot of your bed we need a little loop. And then because we've got a nice sort of furry top, I'm going to use a little bit of dabbing the brush. Oh, get the red off there. There we go. Lovely. 
Now this candle here, we're going to do a little bit of more detail on the foliage, so that holly Ooh, fluff on my brush. Sometimes I just like to leave one side of the holly unpainted, it's, it can just be quite fun. And then a lovely flame. So some cadmium yellow first. And now what I'm going to do is with the rather dilute cadmium yellow, I'm going to create a sort of glowing halo around this candle. So I'm creating a very, very faint dilute circular shape that we're going to let dry to do the actual flame but initially I am going to drop in a little bit more yellow in the middle and just let that blend out. Okay candy cane time. We're going to do stripes and remember this candy cane is a rounded shape so your stripes should also have a rounded feel. And because we've already put in that little bit of warm shadow. It looks like it's got a lovely glossy finish already. nice and last bit of this shadow color again and let's start with the pom-pom on father Christmas's hat so clean that brush off just get a nice bit of color sort of round the edges and don't overwork it so that you fill in the shape too much we want it ultimately to be white. I'm just sort of dry brushing a tiny bit. Lovely. Okay, so we've got all our colours in. We still need to finish off our candle flame, but I'm just now gonna let it dry 100%, rub out the pencil, and then we'll come back in and do last little bits of shadow. Now we're all pencil rubbed out and everything is dried and it's looking great. And now it's time to add a little bit of shadow just to make everything really stand out. So. I find uh, just adding the tiniest bit even where you think you don't need it. It just brings it to life a bit. Okay, I'll just pop a little bit there. And I want to do a tiny bit more on this um, on this stocking. I just feel like it could be a bit more interesting. So we'll do a little bit of stitching. Make it look a bit more like a patch. Nice. 
and then adding just a little bit of shadow When you have shadow on like a, a fluffy furry thing, don't forget to sort of make it reflect the kind of surface it is shading. Now our candle can now have its proper flame. So I start with some cadmium yellow Let's do two C curves, clean that off, Let's get a bit of cadmium orange. And a little bit more in the middle. Now I was just wondering how nice it would be if we put a bow on this candy cane. So I'm just gonna freehand this. So we're going to do, oh, should we do it in, should we do it in green? Let's do it in green. Okay, so I need some quite sort of concentrated green here. So to create a bow shape, what I do, again, this is something I used to draw a lot of when I was younger. What I do is I sort of Paint that outline, clean off the brush, then draw in the colour and then draw it out from the inside so we've got a lovely bit of shine. you've outlined it you can just use the colour you've already got nice isn't it and then last but not least we need to do a little bit more detail on our Santa's hat so first off I'm going to use just a bit of red for there then some shadow blue and brown mix that together Dabbing it on the fluffy ball there and along the underside. It always seems like a lot when you put the shadow on and then you sort of allow it to spread out a little bit. just fine and we'll do a little shadow of that on the ground as well because the candles in the middle emanating all the light so the shadow will be there 
And there we have some beautiful miniature Christmas classics. Thanks so much for watching. I absolutely love painting things in miniature, so I hope you will too. I wanna to say a big thank you to my patrons for all your support because it enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with this one. And if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.